Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is obviously going to be a diamond painting video and I figured I would do this video fairly early on into my diamond painting YouTube career because this is the type of video that I was seeking out when I was brand new to it and I'm saying that as if I'm not still brand new to it. I started it like six months ago uh, but we're in deep now and I feel like I've learned things. I wanted to make this video to show you guys basically how I kit up um, a brand new diamond painting. For the sake of everybody who is new to the lingo, kitting up is basically setting up a new craft project. It doesn't have to be diamond painting, but it's basically getting all of your supplies organized and ready to go for a new project that you're taking on in the crafting hobby world. So, um, I am, well, I'm in the middle of a really big square one right now, but I kind of like to have a smaller palette cleanser kit to like work on to give me a sense of accomplishment when I have one that I know is going to take me months to do. So I've got a nice wintry one. This is Black and White by Darman Art Club, which you can find in stores now, which is super exciting. But this is probably going to be the smallest diamond painting I've ever done, and it's going to be wonderful. It is a very small, quick, snack-sized painting. Um, this one is only 32 by 45, but it's around and it only has 16 colors, so I figured this is going to be a very quick, easy one to get through. And it's still very wintry. I like to do seasonal ones to make me feel like I'm really in the mood. Um, so I want to go over just kind of the basics of what I've learned so far, even though there are endless videos out there like this. Um, for all of you guys who I have recently uh, somehow enabled and influenced into the diamond painting world, this video is for you guys, so you don't have to go searching for them like I did. So let's get started into the actual process. Um, I want to show you a couple of the like organizers that I like using um, and the different techniques that you can use for essentially kitting up a brand new painting. So basically when you open up a new kit, I have already kind of opened this and looked at it, but your canvas is going to come with essentially this. This is your pack, it is so small. Oh my god. This is your pack of all of your little diamonds that you're gonna use to make uh, this wonderful piece. Wow, it is little. This is so cute. The Diamond Art Club, much like most diamond painting companies, just comes with this pack of diamonds. Let me take it out and show you. So you're essentially getting a long strip, probably multiple strips, of diamonds, and they are all labeled with the corresponding numbers that you're gonna need, but these are not resealable containers. Once you open these, it's just confetti through your whole house. Um, so kitting up is essentially just putting these in containers for easy use while you work on your painting, because not many people finish a diamond painting in one sitting. If you do, Wow, that's impressive. So there are a lot of different systems that people like using for organizing all of these. Kitting up is my favorite part of diamond painting, if I'm being honest. It just really speaks to the organizer soul that I have. So there's a lot of different techniques. Um, the first couple of kits that I got came from a company that sent all of the diamonds essentially in baggies, or I at least put them in baggies. Um, but there are some companies out there that will send you um, essentially, a these are star ore ones. This is a company that will send all of your kits with baggies. They're essentially little um, craft bead baggies. They're not for nefarious purposes, people. Get your mind out of the gutter. Um, and a lot of people like working out of baggies just because they're simple. You can kind of just like stuff them all in a container and call it a day. Um, so some people prefer that. I personally <laughs> prefer organizers. Um, and I've, I've tried a different variety of them. The most popular that everybody in the diamond painting world is the Elizabeth Ward bead storage system. This is a 45 piece kit. I've kind of, I have two of these and I've swapped out containers. Normally there's like a row or two of taller containers. The kit that I have kitted up in here just happens to have a lot of small amounts. So I kind of swapped pieces out. This isn't what it normally looks like, but this is the most famous um, system that everybody uses because it comes with 45 pieces, which is about how many colors you're going to have in a normal kit. And all of these you can take out. And all of them are just like little individual containers that you can organize how you want. And there's a lid, a bless for those of us with cats. So this is the Elizabeth Ward storage system. It works really well. It's not my favorite, but I like it just because there are very small containers and very large containers for when you have kits that you only have a very small amount of one color, but you have a ton of like black or white that you're gonna be using. So this gives you like a variety of sizes. My personal favorite are these though. One, because <laughs> cat in question. One, because it zips shut because of said cat but it's essentially just a whole bunch. Oh, these got like smushed down in there. Okay, we fixed it, but it's essentially just a whole bunch of little tiny canisters that have screw on tops, 
which I feel like are more secure. It also has a little pouch right here um, where I put like extra drills. I usually put like the pads of wax that I'm using, the pens that I'm using, and the trays that I'm using for that kit. And it all closes with a zipper. So it's all contained, everything is safe. Um, so these are my preferred method. I'm gonna leave links to these specific things down below and where I've bought them. Pretty much all of the organizers that I've gotten, I've gotten off of Amazon and all of the like specialty items, like the pens and trays that I've gotten, I get from um, sellers on Etsy because I kind of like supporting small businesses, but there aren't many organizers on Etsy. So this is my favorite, but I did kind of want to show you guys an easier option for those of you who are brand new to diamond painting. Like I said, the little baggy technique works wonders. You can walk into like Michael's and get all of those little tiny um, bead bags for really, really cheap. Or if you have a Harbor Freight near you, like the hardware store that's like super, super cheap, this is what a lot of people use. This is the 25 piece storage system. And I just picked this up. This I think is $3.99 and it works really well for smaller kits or for kits that have a lot of colors in it. You could use a couple of these. You could do like two of them to make a 50 piece kit. Um, and it's literally just a little storage container with a whole bunch of little tiny individual boxes, similar to the Elizabeth Ward bead storage system. So I am going to go through and show you guys what I do to kit up um this whole system and hopefully this will be uh pretty helpful for you guys this i think is probably the easiest thing for beginners to use just because it's really cheap um if you have access to it i think you can order them online but there's endless little storage systems like this that a lot of people prefer some people work out of binders some people work out of like boxes i prefer to have like everything right in one place so i'm gonna adjust the camera and i'm gonna show you how i start kidding up okay so basically from here over, this is everything that comes in a standard Diamond Art Club kit. And usually this is kind of a pretty standard kit for most companies. Um, so this is the box that came in. This is your canvas, in case y'all were curious. This is, oh, that is upside down for sure. This is what they look like. So that's where all of the symbols are. This entire canvas is sticky. Like all of this is glue for all of the little diamonds to stick to. So there is like a transparent coating on top of it that you peel off as you go. Um, but this is essentially what it looks like and all of these little symbols, like if we're going to zoom in really close, all of those little symbols are what you're going to correspond the colors with. So that is what um, the canvas looks like in case you are brand new to this entire whole hobby of mine that I've been going through recently on my channel. Um, so you get your canvas, um, you get your toolkit, and this will actually come with a whole bunch of little baggies in it. It's usually not enough to kit up your entire kit though, so don't count on that. Um, but that has all of your tools that you're going to need to do the thing. Um, a little sticker and a lot of people use these to stick like on the side of their box if they're keeping them in a closet somewhere and you don't like and you can't see what it is people will stick these on the box or a lot of people stick them to the actual container that you are using for that kit so that you know that these drills are for this kit. Um, some people have log books that they like to keep track of and they use that but this is essentially just a sticker. So that comes in there. This is the important thing that we need for kitting up though. So Diamond Art Club is my favorite company that I uh, work with and that is primarily because their inventory sheet is a large sticker. This whole thing is a sticker. So this basically is showing you what the art print is, the sizing and whatnot, but this is your little list of the colors that you're gonna be using. And I actually cut this out and I use these to label my containers. And I will show you how I do that in a little bit. Um, and then these are what are rolled up in the canvas. These are all of the diamonds or the drills. If you're new here, diamonds are referred to as drills. Why? I don't know because I'm not mature enough for the lingo of diamond painting. Um, but these are all of the diamonds that we're going to be using in this kit. Usually you get more than you actually are going to need for those of us who are clumsy and we like to spill things. Um, and these are the two things that I am going to be using. Like I said, this is a very cheap storage option that I've personally never used. So we're going to see how it goes. But this is a small kit. Like I said, there are only 16 colors. This is a 25 piece storage thing. So this is more than enough to kit this up. But for those of us who are working on very, very large kits, um, like this one, I've got many colors going and that's why I like these storage systems that are like a whole bunch of little canisters. This is the other one that I'm currently working on. So 
for the sake of time for this video, I figured I would do a little tiny one, try the system out, and we'll see how it goes. So I have washi tape here. This is just like a little tape dispenser thing. I am going to try and use washi tape because this is a tip that I've seen a lot of other people recommend. And now that I have kitted up and kitted down so many projects, I have kind of learned that peeling off stickers from containers um, is kind of tedious and you're always left with the residue. Hey, book people, you can relate to this. Um, taking stickers off of things is always a pain in the butt. I know there are solutions. I am lazy though. So I was going to use washi tape to stick the stickers too so that it's easier to peel off in the future. I'm thinking of future Chelsea for this, which is the intention. So I'm going to open this up. Okay, and it's, oh, they are all individual. I think I'm going to like this. So all of these are individual little containers. This is going to be really fun. And I was curious, these are just little, all their little latches. That's actually really cute. I'm curious if this little tab is going to wear down and like break off over time. She says as she opens and closes it multiple times. Um, but this is a smooth little area to put the sticker on. I think this is gonna work well. So I'm gonna take these out and we're gonna get started. We have all of the little individual containers and they kind of slide around in here, which is gonna be kind of nice actually to like shift them around so that I can like get my fingers in there to grab out individual ones. I say as I knock everything over and I ruin everything, it's fine, okay. Um, so since they fit in like this in the container, like the fronts are facing us, this is where I'm going to stick the, the labels, like the individual, um, numbers. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to put my washi tape on the fronts of these. Okay. So I went through and I put washi tape basically just on this little corner of each container, partially because that will allow me to see like what the color is, like that leaves this half of the container clear so that I can see. And I really only need like a very small section to put each of the stickers on. Um, I did 16 because that's how many colors I have, but some of these packs look really full and I don't know how um, much these little containers hold. So these can be all of my extras if I want to keep them. I might honestly do that. This is going to be a very quick kit, so I'm not going to be worried about like time constraints or like space or anything. Um, so I have my washi tape to use that. Also, fun tip, I like to color coordinate my washi tape to the piece. Like this one has a lot of blues and whites in it, so I chose one that has blues and whites in it. I also try to use the same washi tape on my containers or my organizers as I do on the edge of my canvas. Um, when I'm sectioning out my canvases, like for each section that I want to complete at a time, I usually use washi tape. I'll make a whole separate video about starting it. Um, but also the edges of the canvases will have a little bit of glue on the outside that's sticky that will like collect dust and hair and whatnot. So I usually outline my entire painting with washi tape and I match this um, to that so that I know like this kit goes with that canvas because it all has the same washi tape. Does that make sense? That's a little extra and I admit that. I just happen to like doing that. It looks nice. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this little section um, so that I can cut these apart and actually stick each of these to the containers. Like I said, a lot of kits don't have this as a sticker system. Some just come with an inventory sheet that you can turn into a sticker, like there are sticker makers that people use. Or you can do, like I said, you could literally just write the little number and symbol on the washi tape if you really wanted to. That's also what I've done for a lot of kits. So let's start. Um, I don't have I don't have a system figured out of how I like things organized yet. I'm just gonna go by DMC number and go from there. Okay, so basically these are all of the drills that we're working with. Obviously we've got a lot of 310, we've got a lot of 3865. This is black and white. These are like the most commonly used colors and usually this is gonna be like the big bags that you get in kits. So it's kind of refreshing to only have one bag of 310 to be honest with you. That's gonna be so nice. This is our AB color. This is the one that is like the shiny iridescent ones. I'm very excited to see that mixed in with it. Um, but before I start kitting up, it's a good idea to go through and like take inventory, make sure you have all of the correct colors and it looks like it's probably gonna be the right amount of everything. Not all kits are gonna give you full inventory sheets that tell you like exactly how many of each drill you're gonna have. But I like to go through and at least make sure that I have all of these colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to cut this apart. Is this necessary? No, I just happen to like doing it. It makes me happy. I usually save this just because I don't know what to do with it. I feel weird getting rid of it. So I keep it. Um, and then I'm going to cut this 
apart and just get me down to basically the standard little grid um, that I'm going to be working with. I don't, oh gosh, I technically don't need these, but I'll show you what I do that is very helpful um, with that section. And I don't need that top section either. So this is all that I really need. Um, and like I said, this is a sticker, so I am going to make it easy on myself and I'm going to peel this up and I'm going to cut just the sticky side off of this half. It'll make sense in a second, I promise. I only do that so that it gives me something to peel these stickers off of, if that makes sense. I don't know. It just, it made it easier for me the last time I kitted up. I feel like there's a, probably a way easier way to do it, but today isn't that day. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut out the 125, the whole thing, and I'm going to peel the little sticker off and I'm going to stick it to my first container. And I'm just gonna stick it right on the bottom, right there. And then I'm going to take the corresponding 125, the beautiful Aurora Borealis color that I'm very excited to use. And I'm going to cut these apart and then I'm just gonna dump them into the little container. Okay, so 125, I'm gonna cut the whole thing off and hope that these all fit. Will it work? Oh, that was lovely. This is gonna be fun. I actually like these containers. They're very um, wide, so I can tip like a big um, tray into that. That'll be nice. And voila, that's all I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do the rest of them. And we're gonna see if I'm gonna need overflow. Hey, it's me. You probably thought that you were getting like a nice peaceful music montage while I do this. No, you're getting editing Chelsea's voice. But I figured I would go through and just answer uh, the common questions that I tend to get in my comment section all the time. Um, so the first commonly commented thing on all of these diamond painting videos is if you guys can see my finished ones. I'll make an entire separate video over that. I don't have too many. I've only finished, I don't know, six or seven since I started it. They take a long time to do. Um, and that kind of leads me into the other most commented thing. And that is, what do you do with them when they're done? And I'm going to give you the same answer that I've given before. I don't know. Um, a lot of people tend to give them away as gifts. Most people tend to frame them and hang them on their wall because it is ultimately just a piece of art that you're creating. Um, to me, I enjoy this craft a lot more just because it's something to do with my hands while I'm listening to audiobooks or while I'm watching TV. So the appeal to me is honestly doing the craft, not so much the finished product. But understandably, you're making a piece of art, so people want to know what you do with it. Um, I have yet to figure that out. For now, they're just sitting in my old portfolio from college that I still have, and I have a bunch hanging in our, like, spare closet in our guest room. Like, I have them clipped to pants hangers so that they, like, stay flat, uh, and that's as far as I've gotten. I think in the upcoming seasons, I'm going to try and make my own frames, because a lot of these are very large sizes, so you're not going to get a custom frame for very cheap. So I think I'm going to try and make my own, uh, but that's that's kind of all I've got for answers. You You can gift them, or you can buy magnetic frames or make your own frames and just hang them on your wall and stare at them for eternity. I hope that I hope that answers your question. I know I'm going to answer this a lot, but I would ask that too. Okay, so here we are. We're done. Oh man, that was incredibly satisfying. I didn't even need to use any of the extras. So you know what I'm probably honestly going to do? I'm probably going to take all of these out of this row and this will likely turn into my pen storage and I'll probably put a pad of wax in there and it will be all inclusive. I might put a tray in there. Like your entire toolkit could fit right there. Oh man, that's incredibly satisfying. It looks like a little tiny lunchbox. That is so cute. So that was probably the quickest kidding up has ever taken me. Um, normally, like I said, it takes hours. Like it normally takes me like two-ish hours and I usually do it like I get a glass of wine, I'll put on a movie and I love it because it's so organized and nice. Um, I think I like using the washi tape method. I'm gonna see how distracting it is because I honestly look for the symbols whenever I'm doing stuff. Um, but a lot of people will kit up this way and this just literally goes in order of DMC number so it's easy to kind of unkit kit down is the proper term. There we go. Um, and I think I'm going to leave it this way. But when I'm doing a kit that I know is going to have a lot of similar color groups, 
that I'm going to be working on in big chunks at a time, I tend to organize by color. Like when I worked on the cat one that I was doing, I, I put all of my grays basically in gradient tone. So I took, I would have taken like all of these gray colors and I would have organized them on their own. And I would have taken all the blues and put them together. And I would have taken all the whites and blacks and put them together so that it's kind of easier to grab to certain areas of your organizers when you're working on like a really big one like this. This one I still just have by DMC number, but this is one that I kind of contemplated going through and organizing by like greens and browns and reds, but there are so many colors in this. It just didn't make sense to me. So I just kind of left it as it is. Um, this one, in case you're curious, is this one that I'm currently working on. And this one is this one. So these are two different kitting up methods that I personally use the most. I really like this little container. I'm going to see longevity wear wise, how these little containers hold up. I just see these little tabs breaking off in the future. But again, this entire organizer was, I think, three or four dollars. So you could just literally replace this like six times over for the cost of like a permanent. I don't know. This one, I think, was 20, 25 dollars. And it's still my favorite one because they're really big containers. So they hold a lot of drills and you get 60 slots. So for kits that have a ton of colors, it's really helpful to have them all in one instead of having like multiples of these. So that is going to be it for this kidding up video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I am going to uh, unroll this one and start working on this puppy and I am pretty darn excited. Thank you guys for watching. If you would like me to do more videos like this, I have kind of other ones planned as far as like what tools I like, what shops I like shopping with. Um, and just like basic technique things, but I'm not the best at this. I'm still fairly new to this entire craft, so I feel like I am still in the learning process myself, but I know a lot of you guys, I am your only gateway into this, so I figured even though there are probably endless educational videos out there, this might be a good starting point for a lot of you guys. I'm guilty over dragging you guys into this craft with me, so it is the least I can do to at least show you guys how to do it or how I like doing it. So that's going to be it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will get back to bookish content in my next video. See you guys then.